Fan Showdown Season 7, Episode 2. Now, before we get going, I did get a lot of feedback on the scoring setup from uh, Episode 1. Originally, I was just going to take the decibel reading and the thermal value, add them together, and that was going to be the score for the fan. But it seems like a majority of the people, and now myself included, don't think that's really the best way to go about it. Uh, just adding those two values together doesn't really work out. Now, I did get a recommendation um, of an idea we could use to rank the, the fans by kind of ranking them by cooling power in relation to produce noise by using a little calculation that was sent to me. Mathematics. Now, I proposed this idea to you guys on my um, posts where you guys can vote. The idea was put forth by Christian and everybody overwhelmingly voted that we should use this metric to uh, rate these fans in this season of the Fan Showdown. So pay attention to the end sheet. Uh, we'll see if it shakes up anything with how we're, we're doing things now, but hopefully it'll make things a little bit more digestible, easier to glance at and rec recognize which fan is doing the best. Mathematics! For the new fans of the day, first up we have Archer and his fan Split. Now I have received a lot of submissions from Archer over the season. He is always somebody that's sending in a fan design or two or three or more for um, a specific season of the Fan Showdown. And I saw this one and I thought this idea was uniquely interesting. Back in season six, episode eight, Archer submitted a fan called Two in One. And that fan combined basically two types of fan in, into one, hence the name. Essentially in that episode, Archer took a fan, a blower fan and an actual fan and combined them together to form this hybrid that he thought would get good aspects of both. For this new submission, Archer said he went down the same road. However, this time he decided to take that design and split it apart and have the front fan be like the blower fan as it's, it's the intake fan and the back fan is the actual fan for the exhaust fan, a push and a pull. Now that probably would work great on a radiator. This is an air cooler, so maybe it won't be as important, but it's a, it's a good idea. Next up, we have Eldrum and his fan counter-rotating Experimental 1, or CRX-1. Eldrum said he wanted to submit uh, a counter-rotating fan for a long time now, and given that this season we're allowed to use two A12X25 frames, he's like, ah, this is the perfect, perfect season for it. The assembly consists of two pretty lightweight fans, and although they look very similar, except for they have different pitches to their blades because this is an intake and exhaust, they're not really the same. The first stage fan is a reverse fan with nine blades, and the second stage is a traditional fan, but with only eight blades. Eldrum said he did this hopefully to reduce noise, as the different blade counts will ensure that no one blade is aligned at any given time. And that's, to me, a pretty interesting idea, because everybody knows um, like a contra-rotating propeller, Oh my God, that's impossible to do. A contra-rotating propeller on like an aircraft, they're very, very loud. And that's because all the blades are aligned and they pass over each other, creating a ton of noise. And the reason those systems are so loud is because of cyclic pressure pulses, which is caused by the blades aligning as they pass each other, creating a beat frequency effect. Now using a different blade count means that you can break up this harmonic alignment, which should make the fan seem a lot quieter. I don't think it's gonna be super quieter, but it's gonna help spread that dominant tone over a wider frequency range. In addition, Eldrin created a spacer to be placed between the two fans so they're not butt to butt, and that is hopefully gonna also reduce the, the noise output as well. And at the front of the fan, you got a big old velocity stack. We all know these guys, these big cones that you put on the front to help streamline the airflow going into the fan. Now, when I initially saw this, I was concerned, thinking that we'd probably have an interference issue but thankfully, because the, the fans are spaced out with that spacer, it just happens to drop this cone directly in front of the, the I.O. plate. Now this wouldn't work in a regular PC. Obviously you got a case there, but on this little test bench, that's ideal. Now next up we have Toby and his fan Plasma Vortex. Toby initially submitted this design way back in season five. Then he submitted it again in season six, and then again in season seven. And here we are, we finally see it. It's, it's Plasma Vortex's time to shine. Toby said his design was inspired by the electric arc spinning in a cylindrical magnetic field. And I have never looked at something like this. This was like French to me. I was like, well, what are you talking about? So obviously I decided to look it up and it is, it is a pretty cool looking uh, experiment that you can see a lot of people do it online. And I think that his representation of what we are witnessing there is pretty darn good. And given how the fan looks at the same time, I think it'll probably do a decent job uh, cooling as well. This one is blue and green because I ran out of blue uh, and then I switched to green, which makes it look even cooler, I think. Now the last submission of the day is Iman and his fan Ideal. Now this is one of those submissions where there was literally no information provided with this fan other than the, the fan itself. The only information Iman did provide with this fan is that it was created with looks about right engineering. So that's why I gave it the name Ideal. If this looks about right, I'm pretty sure the fan will be ideal for our current setup. 
In the sound testing, the split came in at 57.8 dBA. The CRX-1 came in around 63.6. The Plasma Vortex came in around 53.4. The Ideal came in around 55.9. Now, so far, as we expected, the CRX-1 is very loud. Everybody knows the contra-rotating fans are pretty loud, but in this specific testing, it was a bit more dramatic than it kind of seems in, in the real world. This thing is essentially a giant horn, and I normally, well, I don't normally, I always measure uh, the sound of a fan from the fan disc to uh, the, the microphone I have, 100 millimeters. And given that this thing has this massive cone on it, it meant that the, the sensor for the, 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 the microphone was kind of just like right in there and it was just blasting it with all the tones. I will say that it is quite loud when you're down there in line with the, with the, the megaphone here, but when you're kind of off to the side, it, it, does, it is perceived as a lot quieter. But either way, that's how we measure it, so pretty loud. In the performance test, the split came in with a delta T of 57.8 degrees Celsius. The CRX-1 came in with a delta T of 50.6. The Ideal came in at 53.1. And the Plaza Vortex came in at 51.9. And after running our new scoring calculations in the cooling power to noise relationship score situation, the Plasma Vortex finished first, the Ideal finished second, the CRX-1 came in third, and the Split came in fourth, and overall they finished first, fifth, seventh, and eighth. And as you can see, although the, uh, the CRX-1 did pretty darn good in our cooling test with all the air that it was able to smoosh through that, <laughs> smoosh, push through that, uh, that, uh, the, the fin stack, because it was so loud, it kicked it quite far down the list, which I think is pretty good. Everybody's always asked that we take into account uh, noise because noise means everything when you're building a PC. You want good cooling performance, but you don't want to just sit there and listen to a fan drone all day long. So I think this is a very interesting situation that we have set up. But as always, check my work. Um, check the sheet. Make sure everything looks good. Make sure everything makes sense. And if you notice anything off or an error being made, let me know in the comments down below. And if I see nothing, we'll just continue hammering towards the goalpost. And always, you know, if you want to get in on the action, you want to submit your own design, make sure to first get subscribed to the channel and then check the description down below. There's a lot of information and useful models you can use as references. Specifically, there is a PDF that shows you the critical dimensions you need to hit to make sure your fan fits on this frame. Plus, there's also a model of, well, a reference model of this cooler. So be advised that you also have an I.O. plate and a stick of RAM to avoid, but you'll have a cooler to make something fit on it if you want to do something crazy and then make sure to send me at least a .stl or a .sdp to the fan showdown at gmail.com, and we will see your fan in the next episode. Bye-bye.